Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to tell you about my utility trailer, perhaps share a day in its life, and I'm going to share with you about the bed liner that I use to finish it. Welcome back and thanks for being here. Today I got to get the trailer ready for a road trip and figured it would be a good time to tell you some stuff about the utility trailer. Now I've already shared another video that talks a little bit about it, uh, how I support bicycle events with it. And in that video, I talked about some of the mods that I did to make the bicycle events work, but I didn't talk a lot about the trailer itself. So I'm gonna to try to cover that here. If you're here for the bed liner discussion, uh, I'll stick a time code up in the corner to let you know where you can skip to if you're not interested in the trailer at all and just wanna see how the Herculiner bed liner works. So the trailer is by Carry-On. It is a three and a half by five foot utility trailer and its model number is 3.5 by five LSHS. Now the first thing I did with this trailer is put in a half inch plywood floor. Uh, I knew that if I didn't put in a floor that the mesh would warp under certain loads. And so I didn't even put a load in it until I got that floor down. And then I painted it, of course. I ran it like that for about a year, maybe two years and then I added the plywood side. So this is three quarter inch plywood on the sides and then I painted them so everything is black. And after a while I added a lid, three quarter inch plywood lid. Now the three quarter inch plywood lid is not what's being shown here right now. Uh, I later changed the lid to something lighter. I got tired of having to lift a three quarter inch sheet of plywood every time I wanted to get in and out of the trailer. And, and then, of course, picking the lid up altogether to move it and put it someplace when I wanted to load something that would not fit under the lid. It's, I don't know, I think it was about 56 pounds. Not terribly heavy, but just cumbersome and a hassle after a while. So this lid is actually made from one by four um, frame and then a quarter inch plywood on top. And that shaved about 25 pounds off the weight of the lid way easier to get in and out of, way easier to move when I want to get in here. The next thing I did was I upgraded my wheels and tires. Uh, the trailer comes with little 12 inch wheels and tires, just little skinny tires that you have to inflate to 90 PSI. And it is just about impossible for this trailer when it weighs 250 pounds to ride down the road on 90 PSI tires without bouncing over everything. It, it could get pretty violent sometimes. And so I went ahead and uh, got a larger wheel and tire. And these tires, uh, these are actually passenger radials. Uh, they allow me to run at 30 PSI. And so they absorbed the bumps a lot better. And of course, to fit these larger tires, I had to get larger fenders. And so these are plastic fenders, I think by Fulton. I, I got all my stuff at uh, eTrailer.com. And um, yeah, the, trailer, the, the fenders are fantastic. Now on the fenders, you might have noticed these uh, bird deterrents. That's what these are. You, you've probably seen them at the tops of, uh, say, traffic lights and some buildings and things like that. And so why do I have bird deterrents on my fenders? Well, it's not because I have a big problem with sparrows, robins, and crows and things like that uh, hanging out on my fenders. It's more to the two-legged uh, turd birds that we have running around that think that they need to be able to sit on everything that's not there. So I had some metal fenders on my cargo trailer and I don't know who it was, but somebody sat on them and it uh, dented, it bent the, uh, the fenders and ripped them away from the body a little bit. So these plastic fenders are a lot more durable and far less likely to, uh, to bend or tear away. But I decided I wanted to put these deterrents on here anyway. Realistically, they're not gonna hurt anybody who sits on them, but they sure look like they would and who really who'd want to sit on these anyhow uh, back to the ride i also wound up changing out my uh my springs and so uh, uh the springs instead of having uh, two leaves they have four and so that allows the trailer to ride a little more smoothly when it is unloaded or lightly loaded and of course uh, adding all the plywood for the sides the floor and the lid that, that drives the weight of the trailer up. So instead of it being 250 pounds, it is more like 460, I think, 470. And the extra weight, while you would think it would affect fuel economy, um, 
It doesn't bother me so much because the trailer rides much better with the extra weight on it. Something else that I've put on the trailer are these LED tail lights. I knew with as much bouncing that this trailer used to do when it had the, uh, the factory wheels on it that the regular incandescent lights would break and fail and I really hate it when lighting on my trailer does not work and I don't like coming across other people who are not taking care of their lighting. So uh, I went straight to LEDs and while I was at it I got these, uh, these steel guards uh, just in case uh, maybe I back up to a curb and, and, and bump something. I haven't really needed them but I saw that they were available so I grabbed the set. And then to supplement them I also added these guide posts. You might see these on, duck, on dump trucks and tractor trailers and uh, they're made so that you can see where the front bumper is when you're going around corners and stuff in a tractor trailer. But I like it for, I use them as guide posts. As you can see my, my lighting up here is functional and so when I am backing the trailer they're great for that and believe it or not when I do a light check I can tap the brakes or turn on a turn on my hazards or a blinker and just check in the rearview mirror. Now of course that's not going to tell me that that tail light there is working but it will tell me if the circuit is working. So odds are very good that if those lights work then so do those. And so I, I really like having the extended tail lights up there. Another mod that you might have noticed is I've got these holes drilled at regular intervals in the top rail here and you can kind of see the imprint of why I was doing that. Um, I had these Yakima top loaders here and that was so that I could have cross rails over top of the lid and I also had uh, a bunch of these tie down hoops uh, positioned around the uh, top of the trailer and later I switched over to a Yakima Outdoorsman 300 that's what these holes here are for because I would fasten it to the side uh, for more stability and that was a game changer for my for supporting bicycling events one last thing I'll show you on this trailer is the, the winch that I put up here. And I originally got it so that I could load my daughter's toolbox. She was a general service technician at a, um, an automotive chain. And so she had a, a ruler tool cabinet, so I had to, uh, of course, transport it home, then unbox it and put the wheels on it, get it back in the trailer, and then deliver it to her shop. And then when she quit that job to join the Marine Corps, we then had to bring that one and her other chest back home. And so, you know, we didn't want to unload it. It's a 350 pound box, I think. And then with all the tools in it, it's 700 pounds. And so uh, this winch, I mean, sure, the two of us could get the box up here, but the winch allowed us to do it in a very slow and controlled fashion. And I, I really like that. And then once that was all done, I thought, well, it's kind of wasteful to have the winch here. I thought about taking it off. And then I realized that it's really good for strapping down uh, loads. Like if I decided I wanted to go to the dump without the lid on, I could run my tie down straps over like you saw me do with the lid. And then I could cap it off with extending this strap to the back of the trailer. And then I'd have a, you know, another, another string of, of strap going across it. And so uh, it's been great. I use a power drill to uh, actuate it faster because hand cranking it takes forever. So when you look at this trailer and hear the things that I just told you that I had changed, uh, you have to ask yourself what is left uh, that is still stock. And so basically the, um, the box is stock, the tongue is stock, and that's about it because I also didn't mention that I changed my axle out. I had uh, um, did a, a bearing packing and I didn't do it properly and I wound up scoring the, um, the axle stubs and sure I could have just had the axle stubs replaced but when you account for labor and everything replacing the axle stubs and then paying somebody to weld them on there and hopefully get them on there straight was going to be more expensive than it would be just to replace the axle so I got a, a Dexter axle uh, I've got a source that I got to where I could get a custom width uh, axle. Yeah, every everything on this trailer is changed out except for the box and the, the tongue. So not really much original left on it, but at least I can continue to use the, uh, the VIN. It's on the trailer. That's about it.
So if I talk about a day in this trailer's life, it spends most of its time just sitting here. And that seems pretty wasteful, but in today's climate, let's just face it, uh, our, our shopping economy has changed. And so I buy a lot of stuff online. And that means I have a lot of boxes that I need to get rid of. And this is a perfect place for tossing boxes. And so as you can see, the trailer is just about full. By the way, this uh, box setup holds 25 cubic feet. So I can fit 25 cubic feet of cargo in here. I basically fill the trailer slowly as stuff arrives, usually adding some yard waste to it. And then I make a monthly trip to a local collection facility. Before I can tell you about the Herculiner in its entirety, I need to empty the box so that I can uh, show you the floor and everything I've done with it. So uh, let's do that real quick. I think I have about 100 pounds of cardboard in here. So we'll see. Uh, it's not terribly heavy. And of course, I get it backed in here pretty, uh, pretty tight to the other trailer. So a little bit of maneuvering to get it out of here, but it's not awful. Always cross the chains. I cross under and over. Basically, I'm crossing the chains twice, but I'm also doing it this way to take up some of the extra slack out of the chain. And then my lighting just kind of hides up under here. I, I wanted to make a, a, a fancy little bracket for it, but I really just don't need it cleaner just to stick it up under the bumper. It never falls out because there's a lip up under here. Then next I test the lights. I actually have to start the car to activate my relay that then turns on everything back there. Looks to me like everything works. I use a pair of ratcheting tie down straps to hold the lid in place. The aluminum angle iron creates a lip to ensure the lid doesn't slide while the car is in motion. And the straps, they, uh, they create a lot of tension to hold the lid in place. After another light test, I'm off to a collection facility, affectionately referred to as the dump. Now it's off to the dump. I'm very um, fortunate to live just less than a mile from the dump. In fact, uh, gosh, if you look at this house right off over here, uh, that big pile of trash would never be in front of my house because I would make several trips to the dump to get rid of it. <laughs> it's, it's so nice, I don't understand how or why people would do that. And the city's not gonna pick that up because it's too, uh, it's too big of a pile and nobody knows what's in it. So if I take it myself, then uh, there's almost no questions asked because all I gotta do is say it's household trash. So uh, this utility trailer has just been uh, wonderful for that. And I've been using the utility trailer for um, over 20 years, not this one. This trailer is uh, five years old. And it all started with me needing to move a piece of furniture. And when I looked at the delivery charge for this piece of furniture, because uh, I needed it to be moved about 50 miles. I lived out in the desert at the time. And uh, it was just cheaper to rent a trailer from U-Haul. And then once I saw what U-Haul was offering and charging for their heavy, heavy trailers, I knew I could do better on my own. So I, I bought my first utility trailer. It's a four by six for $250 and over the course of 20 years the cost of steel and these trailers went up and I wound up able to sell it for the same price that I paid for it. This trailer 
I bought it for I want to say about 350 it's probably even less than that I th because I got it on sale and I got a discount I think I paid three hundred dollars for it and now I've seen stickers on them at Lowe's for over five hundred dollars this trailer if they keep doing that the cost of the trailers keep going up someday I'll be able to sell the trailer for what I paid for it so it will have almost paid for itself trailer is empty I'm not even quite sure how much of that you could see and uh, I'll go back home and I'll show you the Herculiner backing a small trailer uh, can be a little challenging it just takes some practice short trailers want to jackknife quickly and so you just have to stay ahead of where the trailer is going and backing up my driveway is not terribly difficult but because I have to do an S maneuver uh, between two expensive obstacles the setup is critical and if I'm not positioned properly in the street before I make that first steering maneuver then nothing else will work and I have to start all over again and so I just take it slow and this is the one thing I don't like about having a manual transmission is I I can't just let the clutch out and go the clutch speed is too fast for maneuvering this little trailer up the driveway a, a DSG would be wonderful for this but uh, the clutch is holding up I haven't burned it up yet so I am just patient and uh, try not to over rev it and just ride the clutch until I am in position I'll talk about the lid first since that's what I did first I got like a gallon of the Herculiner and it's got a uh, it's like a rubber pellet sort of texture in it and the lid I put on a couple of coats really thick and then you can see these little teeny tiny dots what I'm not quite sure that is is if it's bubbles from me laying it on too thick or if it was because that evening it rained I think it started to sprinkle just a little bit and then I was able to pick up the lid and move it inside for it to finish drying and if you look closely at the fenders you can see where part of it is shinier than the rest and that's because that's where I touched up what happened was after I did the lid I had enough left over to paint the inside and then I still had enough left over to touch up my fenders so I had some areas on the fenders particularly around the edges where it's thinner this is plastic here right so uh, plastic and flexible and so the old finish was starting to wear off a little bit and don't mind that that's just water it, it rained on me a little bit while I was out and so uh, and then I also rolled some on this flat surface here so I just touched up my sides let me show you the inside real quick and of course getting this lid off is so much easier now that I have a lightweight lid I just have to walk it over a little bit to get around the lips I did paint the underside of this it's just paint I didn't bother texturing it because I I didn't have enough Herculiner left over and it's just also unnecessary and so here's the inside of the trailer now again I had left over so this there is none of that pitting that you saw before because I was able to put the lid on this after I had uh, put another coat on it so um, I, I think I laid it down pretty thick I mean you can see in the corners where it had pulled a little bit so this is really all my fault as far as the way the finish went on but at this point I mean I'm not looking for looks I'm looking for durability and I wish I had taken some pictures of what this all looked like before I refinished it because I had another application of the Herculiner on here that was I want to say about two years old and in those two years I subjected the finish to dumps of gravel and dirt and, and shovel scraping um, gosh I, I probably did five or six loads of gravel a thousand pounds each probably two or three loads of dirt a thousand pounds each and then all of the shoveling that went along with it and so this 
stuff has taken a lot of abuse, or I should say that coat did. And so the coating will get, it'll thin a little bit to where maybe the texture isn't quite as rough and it will fade. It won't stay all shiny like this forever. In fact, the only reason this is so shiny the way it is right now is because I've had the lid on it ever since the day I painted it. And so uh, this texture in, and the color is in really fantastic shape and it certainly will not stay that way uh, forever. It will turn more of a grayish color. And if I were to put dirt in here, then, then some of that dirt would change the color a little bit. The Herculiner, I want to say it's around $75 for a gallon. And I, I really didn't need to refinish the inside of the trailer, but because a half open can of it doesn't store very well, it's best just to use it all and then get rid of it. So when I park the trailer, I park it nose up. That way, if there is any rainwater that gets in past the lid, and it would usually get in at the back where it's not a watertight seal. Uh, so parking it nose up prevents the water from pulling up here to the front because it will pull. I can't think of anything else to share about my trailer nor the Herculiner. Post questions if you have them. I'm sure I've missed something because I don't script these things. I just fly by the seat of my pants with my with my talking points. So uh, I appreciate you being here and I'll catch you next time. Take care.